Got some new parts in the mail. You know it's gonna be good when the box is this big. Oh, what could it be? Everybody loves big boxes. Let me put this knife away before I cut myself with excitement. Damn. Got me some new tires. Man, they really squish them down. Holy shit, that's two tires. Wow, they are compressed. Let's cut these out of here, see what they look like. So I just pulled these tires apart and they are like so smushed. I've never seen anything like this before. <laughs> I mean, seriously. <laughs> I didn't even know that you could compress a tire that much. <laughs> That's amazing. I'm sure they'll blow up, you know. <laughs> Can you believe that's an 11 inch wide tire? Wow. They should look pretty sharp on here though. I like the tread pattern. These ones look, they look pretty aggressive. They have a nice side wall and everything. Yeah, so we'll get them mounted up. I gotta take them to a tire shop though because I cannot remove ATV tires without, can't do them by hand, it's way too much work. So I have these tires sorta of decompressed here. They look pretty good. So I'm gonna take these wheels to my buddy's shop and he's gonna break the bead for me so I can change those tires out because doing them by hand is pretty much impossible. And I'm also, I got the quad up on jack stands right now. So I'm just gonna pop the wheels off and get them ready for when I go out there on Monday. And then I'll show you guys what it's doing when I try to start it. Always looks cool when there's no wheels on it, man. Something interesting, I noticed that there was one lug nut missing from every wheel. So, I don't know what the deal is with that. So you're gonna have to replace some lug nuts. All right, so if any of you guys watch Trail Blogger, you know he's got a Raptor 700 and it had pretty much the same issue as mine. So he just replaced the TPS sensor, which is the throttle position sensor. I'm gonna try the same thing. I might as well start there only because it seems like that's a somewhat common issue with these. So I'm gonna check out my throttle position sensor. Uh, if you wanna check out his video, I'm gonna post the link right here. And uh, you guys should check his channel out if you haven't already. He has really good riding videos. The trails he rides are really awesome. And he makes good videos. That being said, he also made a good video tu tutorial on how to replace the throttle pressure sensor or throttle position sensor and um, how to calibrate it and everything and install it, which is going to help me out a lot. But I'm just going to show you essentially the same thing that he did. I'm not going to go probably in as much depth as he did, but I'm going to test my throttle position sensor right now. And if it's bad, I'll go ahead and order another one. It's not worth just buying a new one to throw it on there because it's going to wind up costing around 160, 170 bucks. So as I'm setting up here, I just noticed, you see this boot for the intake? It's hanging off of the, uh, the filter box. Just little stuff like that makes me wonder, you know, how well the previous owner took care of this quad. But that's the kind of stuff that really I take advantage of because 
they're simple fixes. Something like that can make a quad run weird. You know, it's going to be taking in too much air most likely. Plus, from bringing dirt particles and stuff, which may be why the uh, throttle pressure, throttle position sensor, is broken in the first place. So that's what I do, though. I just take quads and I fix up all the little things like that, and then I resell them for a little bit of profit. So let's set up here, and we'll test our throttle position sensor. All right. So our throttle position sensor is right here, and you can see the holes are slotted. I don't know if you guys can see that. They're elongated holes. And it's so that you can take that whole thing and twist it left and right. That's actually how you adjust it. Now I'm hoping that maybe it's just out of spec and that's why it's not working and it doesn't need to be replaced. And to test it, I'll take this sheath off and there's three wires coming out of there. So what I'm going to do is take a multimeter, stick the prong in the yellow cable, and then stick the other prong on the negative of the battery and we'll see how much kind of voltage this thing is putting out and then when I twist the thumb throttle the voltage should slowly increase and slowly decrease nice and smoothly if it's bad there's gonna be you know some erratic voltage output on this thing so let's check it out you can see the yellow wire in there all right, so I'm here with the quad. I have the ignition on. I have the negative terminal hooked up to the battery. And now I'm gonna stick this probe in the yellow wire. And specifications are supposed to be between 0.63 and 0.73. So you can see it's in spec, 0.68. And now I'm just gonna slowly open up the throttle. And it looks pretty smooth. I think it's safe to say that the throttle position sensor is okay. But that's why we're checking this. Because we would have gone and, you know, blasted like 200 bucks on one of these things and it would have been a waste of time. So this is good news and bad news at the same time. It's good news because I don't need a new throttle position sensor. But the bad news is I still don't know what the heck is wrong with this thing. So I think I'm just gonna start going through this wire harness and you know, I'll put new, uh, new bolts on here, pull all this stuff apart, make sure that all these grounds are good and uh, just kind of go over everything, check my connections. Let's start with the simplest stuff first and until my new battery comes, I'm just gonna use this and we'll see if we can get it fired up. So now we'll check the spark and the compression. Plug looks wet, so it looks like it's getting some gas. So to test this plug, I'm just going to throw it in the boot and then put it up against some metal on the engine. And I'm going to turn this light off in a second just so that you can see the spark. So you can see it's sparking pretty good. Now unfortunately I don't have the right size adapter for my compression tester, so I'm not gonna be able to test the compression, but I really don't think that's the issue here. I think there's some kind of issue either with the timing or maybe the coil, because I noticed that this thing sparks sometimes when I'm not even pressing the ignition. Something's definitely not right, um, but I don't think it's the compression. So for now I'm just gonna skip that and move on to testing a couple other things. So this quad's not even firing with a shot of starting fluid. So that tells me that there's something wrong with the timing on this quad or the ignition because it's definitely getting fuel and I'm 99% sure it's got good compression. So it's time to start digging into this electrical system a little further and check the timing.
All right, guys, so I toyed around with this for a little bit and was tinkering around. And then after I was done playing with it, I wound up sending a message to Trailblogger and talking to him. And he suggested that I throw a new spark plug in because he said he was experiencing similar symptoms before his throttle position sensor even ended up being a problem. And he said putting a new plug in made it run a lot better. So it's cheap enough and it's easy enough to do. So I might as well throw a new plug in and we'll see what happens. Just got back from AutoZone and they had the right plug. Plug I'm running is a CR8E by NGK. It's the stock plug. So let's throw this thing in there and see if it fires up. Also guys, don't forget to check your spark plug gap. The stock gap is supposed to be between 0 0.028 inches and 0 0.032. So this one checks out. The 0 0.028 fits in there pretty easily. And the 0 0.030 just barely makes it. So it's probably about 0 0.029 where it's at. So we're just going to snug that up. Don't make it too tight. Make sure your boot's clipped all the way on. The moment of truth. <laughs> so I left the ignition on overnight. <laughs> 12%. So unfortunately it wasn't the spark plug. So at this point I'm gonna strip the gas tank off and I'm gonna start going over all of the electrics, check all the grounds and all that stuff. And then I'm also gonna adjust the valves. You can see the top of the engine here. Have our intake and exhaust valve inspection windows. So we'll be popping those off to adjust the valves. And then this comes off also so you can see your timing chain and line that up. Before I do that though, I'm actually gonna take this battery out and I'm just gonna run over the wires and everything and look at our connections. So you can see whoever took this battery and tried stuffing it in there did a real chop shop job. You can see they just must have taken some kind of grinder and you know tried to cut the battery tray out so that the other battery would fit. A couple bolts are missing here. So it's all stuff I'm gonna replace. Luckily, I think the, the stock battery will still sit in there okay. And there's like little ledges so it shouldn't go anywhere. So we'll have to see about that. And also, this here ground wire goes to this HMF box. I don't think I would have had it wired that way. So I'm gonna rewire that as well. Probably hook it to the frame or something else, but not to the negative battery terminal. Just out of curiosity, I'm gonna try running this bike without the optimizer and see if it starts. So I'll just unplug this from the harness and put the stock connector back on the fuel pump.
Well, it was worth a shot. Looks like I'm taking this tank back off. Now I'm going to take this air box off so I have a better view of the wires and better access to this CDI right here. So I've been out here tinkering with this thing for a little bit now today. I think I've just about had it for the day at least. And I did find one thing that was a little concerning and could be the problem. I found a relay that has like a crack in it. I have it right here in the vise and I was testing it. And I'll show you, it does open and close. I have these alligator clips hooked up to a battery. Pop that on there and you'll hear it click. So that works, but that doesn't mean it's a good relay. Then I took this test light here and I pinched the, uh, the other alligator clamp of this onto the other pins. And I tried every combination to see if there was a complete circuit to light the light up and nothing happened. I'll show you. We'll hook that on there. And now this light should light up when there's a completed circuit. Nothing, nothing. And I did try it with the alligator clip on the middle clamp too, um, to try to connect these two here, it just doesn't work. And I tested my light just to make sure. It's always good to make sure your stuff is working. See it lights up, there's a completed circuit. So this, I am pretty sure is a bad relay. I don't know if that's why the quad's not starting, but it's definitely some place to start. I already found the relay online for 14 bucks, so I'm gonna order that. Unfortunately, I'm not really gonna be able to take any further steps in uh, diagnosing the wiring harness. I mean, I can take stuff apart, but I won't be able to test anything without this relay. And uh, so most likely what I'll get to next will be the valves. Here is the crack in the side of this relay. That's the main reason why I picked this out as something that might have an issue. Like I said, for today, that's most likely going to be it. I can only take so much of this quad, you know, go playing around with the wiring harness and stuff. It starts to get frustrating. So it's time to set it aside and do some editing. And most likely what I'll do um, tomorrow and Friday is get together a video on adjusting the valves because that's something that I can do without the quad running at all and while I'm waiting for that relay anyway. So we'll get to that next. Anyway, guys, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please comment and subscribe. Once again, guys, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Also, guys, I did get that 400 EXC finally running. I cleaned the carb up, and I pulled off the bowl, and I have never seen, you know, gas in a four-stroke look like this. It was like this thick green goo. I don't know what the deal is with that. But I pulled the bowl off, cleaned the jets out and everything, and it starts up now and runs pretty good. It's not perfect. I didn't go crazy with the carburetor. I just wanted to get it running because I have it up for sale and a running bike is just worth so much more than a bike that's not even running.